Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brand as always. I never do this alone. I have the ladies. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Great. Morayo, first time this week? Yes, are first time. I missed you Monday, Tuesday. Ah. How was your weekend? My weekend was fine. I think you guys already talked about your weekend. So I was at Nick Fest with my kids. It was fun. We had a little incident as, um, with Aima. Ah. She sort of choked on the in the foam, foam party. I, I was yeah. scared of that. Ah. Yeah, I, I, I mean that thing just made scare. me. I, I couldn't stay much longer after then. So we had to go. I mean, she threw up. She ah. was, yeah. But they had fun, and uh, I went for. The Slave Festival. Oh, yeah. Yes, I that think was the bike. interesting. Yes, that was interesting as well. So I did the the usual, all the things that, you know, that I'm interested in. So I went for a health talk where they were talking about skin and how to get glowing skin and things like that. And I asked one of the um, <clears throat> speakers if she could come on our show. I mm. think Nigerians would like to hear, you know, all the sort of things that they can do ah. to get good glowing skin um, and non-invasive surgery procedures and mm. things like that. Then, of course, exercises, what you can eat. We got a book. Fantastic weekend. weekend. Yes, <laughs> really. You, you should have fun. How are you doing, Nima? Ah, Nima, I have issues with... I, I drove in the river home yesterday. Because you're yeah, water. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a reality that I'm, that's very close to home. Because we all live in Amodofi. It's close along the lagoon. And yesterday, um, hmm. numerous factories blocked the road. The tankers just blocked containers blocked the road and the alternative I could take, I thought was an alternative, was a terrible flooded community. And mm. I could see the plastics, bag, bags, everything. So we're all culpable. It was something that, you know, um, Governor Fashola did easily by dredging the canals regularly. So mm. the waterbed goes down and Lagos um, land goes up. But then it's, it's, been, it's been difficult for the successors to follow. I'm wondering mm. why. Mm. Uh, all right. How are you in Sakwe? I'm good. Um, I did a um, lesson. I, I'm the lesson teacher for the house. Okay. Wow. Yes. So I take my kids, actually do it religiously. My, my husband is always hailing me for it because I'm very, very detailed with teaching my kids every afternoon through their homework and all of that. So yesterday, I realized that they were, having, they were struggling with millions. So they give them 300 and something million. So I was setting questions for them, and I'll correct them, set questions for them, and correct them. But I was being a bit harsh because I've explained this thing last week. We explained this thing. Why are you still struggling with it? And I'll turn it into fun. So I'm like, can't you see that it's so easy? He said, yeah. And the, because I changed the conversation yeah, from being like, I'm um, forcing them to get it and I made it like a fun yeah. thing. He said, oh yeah, it's a million, it's a thousand. I'm like, okay. Thank yes. God, you are getting a different yeah. method. So yeah. I'm enjoying yeah. it. So they're going to do assessment today, and I'm praying that, yeah. you know, they remember all that I taught them, you know. Fantastic. But then, mm -hmm. That's be good. I, be, I have oh. to be patient. I, yeah. I tend to just get angry you when they do it. You what the teachers go through. Yes. Well, we have to say, we have to acknowledge the gift. Yeah. <laughs> we got a gift this we morning. We got a, a gift TVC. this morning. And somebody said, um, say, TVC, your view. Dear ladies, please accept this as a token of all your hard work on your view, TVC. And the most, especially for representing womanhood very well, from one of your fans in the UK, Oyilola. She sent us this thing. Oyilola, thank you. She wrote our names to it. So, Takwe, that's yours. Nima, I'm not going to see you by you. Okay, Nima, that's you. And Mariam, that's yours. And this is YK Zo, and this is Obia Jilu. So, I mean, thank you so much, Oyilola. Like, thank you. We really appreciate this. That means so much. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Wow. It's skincare. It's oh, clinic. It's clinic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> thank I you. Thank you for that. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, you know, thank you, let's thank you so much. Let's go to the we come back. In Marke, we're going to actually talk about uh, in Marke, the 59th year independence, Ada Small um, is situated 810 uh, Hakim Balogun Street, Agidimbi, not too far from here. Um, they've given, they are, uh, they are saying they're going to give 5 to 20% discount to all those who come to shop, I think, today. Mm -hmm. um, today. So please visit Ada Small now from now till Sunday, the 6th of October, to get that 20% discount on all purchases. And also, Cadbury Bonvita for beverage, and uh, they've given us some drinks. We have Indomie for our guests today. We have yeah, Mimi everybody Chin -chin. gets Indomie. We have Munchit for our guests. Guys, today we are going home. We are going home with quite a bit of 
gifts today. So we have things from um, um, gifts from Dofil Foods and from Bon Vita. Mm -hmm. We're going to go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. So I'm told that Ada Small is actually giving the discounts on specific items. So when you go there, do the shopping, and then you should get some discount based on the items you purchase. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's start with the nation this morning. Buhari's advices how to make Nigeria prosperous. Why Nigeria should celebrate by Lawan Bajabia Mila Mustafa. Nigeria in danger over 11 gas contract breaches. Or your Lagos Kaduna top 2.2 million teachers list. Lagos to fix roads after rainfall. INEC chief diverted 84 millionaire allowances. Okay, what story are we taking in um, Nation? So, uh, based follow up on the um, PNID issue, mm -hmm. they, we've now uncovered that we Nigeria has breached 11 gas-related contracts. Mm -hmm. These are contracts that we have signed in partnership with 11 companies that are supposed to help us sp source power mm -hmm. through gas um, exploration, mm -hmm. and we didn't keep our part much. of the deal, and a lot of them are already in arbitration. And they are all waiting for PNID to get their claim so that they will now also go for the money. So obviously, Nigeria hasn't kept its part of the deal. And obviously, we did not even pay attention to this contract. So, well, this is a major indictment on the officials. And I mean that every official between, for the last 16 years from 1999 mm. to date. No, 2010. No, hold on. All this officials of the DPR. And I mean senior executive directors of the DPR, 99 till that period of mm. time, should be investigated. Yes. And all past, this is a serious indictment on our leadership mm. because we had a law against gas flaring. Mm. And we, rather than, you know, completely uh, ban gas flaring, what they did was to have an arrangement where companies flare gas at a particular percentage. Mm. To uh, divert that was to, to, you know, convert those gases to power, which is why we signed all these deals. Yes. We did not do anything. We had a job officials. Yeah, what I even found out that was even worse for me. And the there was never any intention to actually follow through with those agreements. Exactly. The idea was to embezzle the money. So it wasn't as if we actually breached it. There was no plan to actually Mariah, execute. That's what it was it just like. the, the, That's the idea. So that's what happened with PNI. There was no sincerity. These people, these people not Wait. only worked and get paid for those periods of time, where they didn't advise the government on the best things to do, they also retired to the best of pensions mm. while other Nigerians are suffering for so the, for the, the ones of, that, that, of that the that be that, yes, yeah, so for me from the very beginning I knew we we're going to come to a point like this where we'll find out that there are so many other things just like PNID obviously there's the like, like a whole sector mm. a scam sector that just sits That's there and sees how to scam Nigerians and you know something that's so interesting that I found about that PNID let me give an example so you have an idea what was investigated by Bloomberg was that PNID for example just let me just say hypothetical so you understand what we're saying they come to Nigeria and they get a contract. 
for the, the, the Mr. X is an international contract, yeah. company that's going to bring in this maybe materials for police, for example. Mm -hmm. So what they do is that after I agree, they will take Nigerian officials to the international company to bring the, the, the goods. At some time, they will not come back home, and then they create a Nigerian version of that company. Mm. And it's that Nigerian version of that that will that begin to interface with the government. Because what happened was that they now found that our, for the, when they investigated, Bloomberg investigated, they found that, that the international company had no idea. They said, oh, well, we, did. we only had one meeting with Nigeria. We thought that you guys are going to come back. Like like so but Nigeria thought there was a contract yes. already. Yeah. So it was actually from the, from the very start. There was no plan was to, to execute. Come up. Yeah. Yeah. The the project was just scam, scam. From, from and from this is carried out by our Nigerian leaders. Officials. Nigerian Nigerian officials. officials. They have to be the ones to be investigated. So exactly. this thing is deeper than we're seeing. So but you know what? Quickly, more, more Lagos stories will, come up. will uh, fix roads um, after rainfall. Yeah. In the alternative, we can, we can also dredge our canals. It's possible. Dredge right. our canals and let the waterbed go down. Mm. Lagos well, is getting flooded. We have to move on very quickly to the punch. <laughs> Buhari presents budget to National Assembly next week. Mm -hmm. Aisha Buhari greets Nigerian spokesman <laughs> defends her absence. Mm. Two billion dollar fraud, DSS hunts for arrested Mainers informants. One drowns as flood washes away Ekiti Bridge. Presidency debunks rumored third term bid for Buhari. President South African visit to determine further evacuation. Nigeria rich, rich Nigerians suffer if economic woes persist. And PDP others attack Buhari on Independence Day speech. Aisha Buhari, who has that story? Hmm. So, Mrs. Buhari. Mrs. Aisha Buhari has been in Comunicado for over two months. She wasn't even at the First Ladies event that happened in, on September 25. And she was represented at that event, but only for October 1. And she gave us a, a she wrote on her social media pages a congratulatory message to Nigerians. And Nigerians went attack, uh, attacking the situation again. And then another spokesperson said she's a free citizen of the country, free to go anywhere, free to, you know, to, 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 to go to her village and keep quiet and not, you know. And I'm wondering, ah, this is our president's wife, if she doesn't want to be first lady, she's a she's president's first wife, lady. She's and God forbid lady. that somebody kidnaps her. We, are, we invoke every agency, so Nigerians can okay, ask questions. We need to see we her. Have the power mm. to ask president, third term, see her. No, there's a human interest, interest story. story. Yeah. The AKT. Okay, oh, we okay. can do the third term. I, I think it's the only term, place. Mm. Yes. So the president is saying that there's been rumors that he may be running for a third term. He says this is not going to be possible, that there's no circumstances now or ever that may come up that will make him run Amen. for a third term. That it has happened sometime with a particular government and an administration. It was wrong then, it is wrong now. Is it the same president so, yes. that said he wouldn't do second term? Whatever. But the point is that, listen, you better, yeah, be, so you better, be, better, term, you better be praying for third term because that right. will happen in Rwanda and the, and the, and the man is working. So please, let's move on. Please, let's move on. Rwanda, they are president. You do third term, now you start making noise. But sometimes you have, you need consistency for a period of this kind of situation. So let's stop acting as if we don't need change. Okay, no problem. Moving on to Vanguard. Vanguard, economy, Buhari's experts, others list options for government. Alleged rapes, submit yourself to court for justice sake, Dakolo tells Fatou Yimbo. Mm. No outbreak of epidemic in Queen's College, says Pemsek. Nigeria at 59, kudos knocks greet Buhari's speech diminishing, diminishing BP's role. Uh, South Africa grants AFP's rights to operate daily flights. Okay. Pemsek saying that um, there's okay. nothing wrong in uh, what happened. College. College. So we remember we had read the story about uh, the epidemic, the outbreak of um, flu-like um, um, illness. It was waterborne. Yes, yes in, in Queen's, Queen's College. College. Mm. Um, the story is that about 1,000 students have been evacuated. Parents have come to take their kids out. Right. There was also a story that alleged that there were 700 of them who were in sick bay. But the permanent secretary, Sonny Echona, I hope I'm getting his, the pronunciation of his name right, says he stopped by the school, that he saw a few students in the sick bay. He did like a legwork. He went around the school. He didn't see any sign of an a, a epidemic. But you know that they are looking into it, and that this is a period really that people have issues with, like mm. respiratory. Mm. So in addition, this also could be the weather. In addition, also they're taking that. some swabs from from kids that actually been in the government. Yeah, they're exactly. now trying to investigate to know exactly mm -hmm. what so, the uh, if issue. I spoke, the the parents, yeah. I, I spoke with a parent. I spoke with a parent of um, one of my uh, someone in Q's, uh, Q's college, and she said that you know this was mostly like propaganda. Mm. The way the PTA have been investigating, and they don't have any of such issues. Yes, mm. they had about seventy students in the sick bay, but due to, of course, rainy season and all the flu like. Let's talk about South Africa very quickly, instances. because we have to run out of time. Our president mm -hmm. is going to South Africa with a 16-man team. We have that story. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, well, I actually don't have that story. Okay, so pretty mm -hmm. much they're going to South Africa and um, they're going to have a, meet, a town hall meeting with Nigerians There's over there meditation. to get the issues. Uh, and then they'll have a meeting with Ramaphosa to see how they can resolve the issues be with Nigerians. Before we run off, I know we keep saying that flood is coming, flood is coming, flood is coming, and we have flood. No. And someone very close to me lost a mother-in-law just two days ago oh, no. due to flood. Make I'm saying that one, it, the Kitty Bridge was washed away due to flood. Mm. And we heard it. It was said over and over again. How can we prevent? Loss of life due to flood. It's by simple dredging. It's by cleaning up. Prepare, prepare, prepare ourselves. Rainy season bridges are good. Yeah. Rainy season is a certainty. Uh -uh. It's not something you know that we talked about. Did you guys listen to the speech? How many people heard that speech? Were you inspired? Okay. You guys talk about the speech. We will talk about the speech. We will make it a hot topic. But there's too much to talk about today. Mm, yeah, but in the in the papers no, no, we have like the papers yeah the papers we have um, different responses, but mostly those who are coming against the, the yeah criticizing the president PDP of course front line, saying that they were not happy with the way what he said everything was contradicting like the manifesto promises that were not made were spoken as if they were already done um, this issue with our vice president Musa is getting hot, but you know what we'll, 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 we'll let it brew <clears throat> and we'll talk about it properly maybe next week because we need to know what's going on yeah i mean people have issues with the, the fact thing. that they seem, they, they seem to be stripping him of, of more responsibility everything. so and people are saying at the same time the, his, his office is saying there's no problem there's no issue so who, who do we believe we'll see how it goes let's go on a break now when we come back we'll discuss <laughs> other hot topics stay with us we'll be right back <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So, a Nigerian lawyer, Edem Osai, has raised concerns over what she describes as the Ministry of Education's insistence for secondary school students being taught business studies to continue to practice using typewriters. <laughs> According to her, the era of using typewriter is long gone, and that students who are exposed, supposed to be leaders of tomorrow should not be exposed to such archaic method of doing business. Now, you can join the conversation on 70 806 You can also tweet to us at TVC, and please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. All right, so when you heard the story, what, what came to mind? Um, the issue of the, of the typewriters. Hmm. Yeah, she's right about it being archaic, really. But I do remember in secondary school, we did it. Uh, I, I did um, business studies. I hated typing. It was, um, we had a, a, typing, a typing pool and we'd go there. And I remember ASDF, semicolon, LKG, ta 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 you understand? But the thing is, the, uh, Business studies is about learning how businesses are run in your today. Mm -hmm. And we know that typewriters are not used in any businesses anywhere today, even in yeah, Nigeria. But I, I, but okay. There was a time I had, a, uh, I had to go to the magistrate court, I think in, in Yaba, and they said I had to get a typewritten copy. The staff in the, at, at the court took me just outside the court. On this particular street beside the court, it was like I was in a parallel universe. There were like many of these typists with their really old archaic typewriters. Mm. They looked like contraptions that they had put together themselves mm. and people were there from the court mm. giving them these copies for them to type. So obviously there's a tiny market mm. for people like that. But I'm sure Nigerians are not sending their children to right. school to well, learn how to end up being those typists. I, I kind of disagree though. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that there's absolutely nothing wrong in using those typewriters because mm -hmm. it's the same keyboard. The keyboard hasn't changed. It's the same keyboard we use for many years. So in, in a situation where school, um, schools are not provided with the need, the, the, the updated computers at this point, I would rather at least with the kids um, get accustomed to using that same keyboard, which is the same thing they're using on their regular phones and regular, um, their, um, regular computers. Now, they not even have anything at all to practice with. So yes, I agree that typewriters are outdated. But the keyboard still remains the same. I mean, th th okay, th Lima, let me what quickly, are your thoughts on this? Let me yes. quickly say this. That this, this is, of course, just shows that we are still in the old order in um, educational curriculum reforms. <coughs> That's number one. No? The reason is because typewriters, as they are on the old typewriter, what you have on the keypad don't even help children. There are now new apps, software apps, that you just install on your computer. When I 
was in secondary school, they used this typewriter. I remember carrying my younger sister's own on my head <laughs> for her to write Junior Waiyeki. Because oh. they asked the parents to bring a typewriter. We went to rent one. I was the one who took it to school. In a, in a uni, uh, unity school in the, in the uh, 2000s. Mm. Carried it on my head for her to type and write an exam that she didn't need to. What she needed to do, what, nobody was marking that uh, uh, at the end of the day. It was nonsense. What I used to help her at home was an app I put in on, on the system in the room for her to do typing. So that app just gives you, and you learn how to type. If, if that is the only thing you want to study in business studies, using the typewriter for it in 2019 mm -hmm. is a waste of your time mm. and a waste of a child's okay. time. All right, let me come to you. Talk. What are your thoughts on this issue of typewriters being used? Um, well, the truth is that our, we, we all know like it's very obvious that the educational system in Nigeria is not in the 21st century. We're not here yet. We're not in the 2000. So we are still operating. We're still teaching courses that are irrelevant on every skill in the universities. People go and get degrees that they can't work with it at all. I have someone studying science laboratory technology, which is what I did. And I asked, what are they preparing you for? She said, they are preparing me to know how to take care of chemicals. I said, do you know what is in the chemicals? I said, they just tell us it's dangerous, how to label chemicals as azadious and non-azadious. And I said, you are spending five years in the university to know how to label chemicals. That course should have been scrapped long ago. That shows how backward our educational well, system is. It should have been, yes, totally. So what, what do we do is to understand that the, the jobs of the future is not what we're preparing children for. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to ascertain if you can use a typewriter now to employ you. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yeah. So I think we're all saying understanding the same thing. typewriter does not, mm -hmm. is not the same that understanding how to use a system. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> because that's your argument. Your argument is that the same key <coughs> keypad it is it's totally, not even that totally keypad. different. No, it's not. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I lost a job once as a young person. I lost a job because I was unable to type at a certain period, at a certain speed, speed. So a speed at, a point at, that, at that time. Now, I think for business studies, as basic as business studies is, the idea is just to expose, listen, these this public schools don't have anything, <laughs> really. They really, tr truthfully, don't have anything. So if, if, we, if all they have right now is, I'm not saying typewriters are good, trust oh. me. Here, here I'm saying, okay. typewriters are a cake, and I totally agree. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that I would rather do that nothing. than nothing. That's the point. Okay, Morel, this is, this is where I would insist that we, know we change the narrative mm. completely, and our conversations go to changing the narrative. When you talk about schools not having computers and they make do with typewriters that they have old ones, it makes a bit of sense. But when you talk about exam bodies, preparing exams and insisting that the children who will that's sit for wrong. that exam is not for us moving forward at all. Yes, that means wrong. that, you know, the yes. people, the decision makers yes. are still like 20 years so away the practice from where they use it now. Yes, I understand. So you can have it in yes. your house, right. maybe keep it like vintage and let your children see how a typewriter <laughs> is. <laughs> and then you, that's a different thing. You put it in a, in a, a small library in school so students go there and see how they used to type mm. or, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, the, Evolution of computers makes sense, but you cannot insist that we write an exam with it. And, and employers truly now no longer need that. In fact, some jobs are becoming obsolete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. maybe Definitely. maybe that job you lost, mm -hmm. you might still retain it <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me as well, I think that being in public school does not mean that you're not going to come out and be in the same community. You're going to come out mm -hmm. and compete with those who use computers. Right. Mm -hmm. So that they're in public schools, even makes it more imperative for government mm -hmm. to make sure that those people that's are computers. very well equipped. Mm -hmm. I know that, I, I don't want to get the name of this um, thing wrong, but there's a particular organization, they are working on ways to provide like um, education to public schools um, who can who do not have access to things like maybe computers so they get videos sent mm. to them and then they get to be taught by very knowledgeable and skilled teachers who normally the schools would not be able to employ so these students are able to watch them mm -hmm. then you see the thing you talked about the app and a lot of parents have um, phones that our children end up oh. just playing with mm -hmm. you know so in different ways we need to bring those people in public school up to date. Right. Then I was also thinking, my child already goes to school. How are you there? Let uh, me take this call, please. Okay. He's holding for a while. Hello, are you there? Hello. Thanks for calling. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Month. Happy Independence. Yes. Happy New yeah, uh, Month. Happy New yeah. Month. Yes, now. Happy Independence. Yeah, yes. <laughs> thank We're you. We're still celebrating like <laughs> We're still celebrating. Mm. Uh, Mariah, thank you. God will continue to increase your knowledge. Mm. Don't wear my good fans. Yeah, you don't know. Mm. Ah, Antinema, Barista, so, we're done. Thank you. What is good? Uh, Madam, thank you very much. Uh, the topic you are bringing up today, it has been a kind of great response mm -hmm. to me. I passed through the normal primary education mm -hmm. in Oshun State, 
and secondary education to us. So I moved to Lagos, my LD is got fully and you like. So I can tell you that going to public school is not a taboo, it's not a problem. It's not. No, so no, so. But the value you want to get there, and the value even the teacher, what you don't have, you can't give. Hmm. Now the teacher, the teacher themselves, is the teacher themselves, do they have the value, do they have the knowledge you, know you want it. to pass on? Mm -hmm. The study of all the teachers, lecturers, they are just reading the facts, reading mm. to uh, disseminate the information to students. That's the bottom line. Mm. Now, a, 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 a lecturer or a uh, teacher, a classroom teacher, who doesn't know how to use computer? What is he going to teach? Hmm. Part of what he did when I was doing my head in Lagos Poly, imagine somebody teaching us an entrepreneur. Who entrepreneurship? That was when they introduced it. And it doesn't run a business. Hmm. It doesn't run a business and it's teaching entrepreneurship. What do you know? Thank you very much. You're very correct. <laughs> so, okay, right. So, in, okay, right. Yeah, I was, I was, you were saying yes, I was saying something. I was saying I, my, my child goes to school where already they have a a computer room. Everybody just gets there and they do amazing things with computers. Imagine him now leaving primary school to go to secondary school and then he's In giving the, a, a typewriter. With... He would be crazy. I mean, he would go, he, you know, it's understand. like he's gone backwards, you know. So he would know, he's, oh, he would know yeah. he's gone backwards because yeah. that keyboard that you're talking about, he would see it and he knows what he can do on the computer and so then all he, he has to do, do is it. type. So, Mario, I feel sense. that, um, you see, the challenge we have is that <clears throat> Uh, when we when we think through these things, we don't under, we, the, the people the people we are interfacing with don't understand that everything they know is irrelevant now. We have Forever Twenty One shutting down. That's a successful, seemingly successful business shutting down. We're having big companies in the in, in developed countries knowing that they couldn't innovate, and as a country, we have refused to innovate. And as long as we don't innovate, we would be we will continue to go down. Mm. So when we have, I I, I met a, a, one of my nieces was like, she's thirteen. And she saw a, a TV, you know those are our old mm. television. We have one here, the, the big one. No, no, the big, not the dumb one. No, just a normal television that has a box at the back. Yeah. She has never seen it before in her life. I'm mm. going to say, what is this? She said, I think it's a radio. Like she had no idea. Every TV she has seen in 13 years was okay. a flat plasma screen. Um, yeah. So, so things are changing, well, and we must expose these children. The policymakers, those who are behind our education reform already use office assistants on their computers in mm. the office. Mm. How can you still advocates that you know the business studies education should be typewriters okay, so you know what, when we you have, have visionaries I, I think I, 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 I hear everybody what you, what you say but i think um we we'll probably try to get in touch with the Ministry of Education in this state yeah. to why? find out why because yeah. there's always a reason i don't want to assume that yeah, they don't know what they're doing so let's assume so we'll try to contact the state uh, um, um, Ministry of Education and get the real reasons why they are still insisting their secondary school students practice with typewriters. Once we have that answer, is to make a better conversation. Or better decision, yeah. they should just reform because let's I, go I guess break. they won't want to come. When we come back, <laughs> we discuss the issue of noise pollution. Hmm. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Right. Thanks for staying with us. So noise pollution. Not only from religious houses, from everywhere. Clubs, mm. religious bodies have now become a menace. Nothing less than 15 complaints, especially at highbrow areas, are being made daily. According to reports, people with high blood pressure mm. and the aged are dying as a result of this menace. Join us on the show is the general manager, Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency, Dr. Dolakwa Fashawe. <laughs> so you can call us on 070 806 you can oh, also yeah. tweet to us at TBC Connect. Please hashtag your TBC so we can read your tweets. Before we come to what she's doing, because mm -hmm. we'd like to hear your own experiences with noise pollution. Mm -hmm. Do you have people making noise? I would like, well, I'd like to pass around the mic button. The first ladies, let me come to you. Yeah. Yes, when I saw this, I was like, unfortunately for me, mine is worse. I live in, I live in an estate where houses are just like, you know, beside each other. And everybody in my estate has humongous size generators. Mm. That is my own pollution. That is the sound of the generator. I can't sleep. My children, mm. I have to, I've had to move them to my room because their window opens right into my neighbor's right. compound. Right. So that for me is what I can't handle. Right. That constant noise throughout okay. the night. Let me come to Nima. Any experience in that? Uh, 
Yeah, can you ask that kind of question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he faces me every day. But we don't suffer generation, uh, yeah, generator sound, so we control where generators are in my, house, in my house, and then we also use alternative power. But you see the churches that live with me, there are like six of them. I choose the one to hear. I'm actually very used to the sound now. I sleep with it. I'm used to it. I know when they are doing the Ikori, and I sing along mm -hmm. for the ones that they do the Catholic <laughs> church, because I went to Catholic primary school. But it's so, sometimes it's, we're faced with serious religious issues when you have to confront. So there was a time they were doing a, a, an event and they brought it into my compound. And I said, okay, you don't have members here. If your members are here, they've traveled. It was December. <laughs> Can you please take the noise? And they said, no, as long as they've stopped, they must continue. I said, ah, I should have a choice. I'll, you know, and Nigerians and their attitude. Is almost, if you have to deal with it personally, mm. they will always be clashed. It has to be regulated. Okay, let me come to talk about having So, uh, yeah, f for me, um, it was relatively just in the noise from the yes. generators. Oh. However, there's a new sort of like a pub that yeah. opens just <laughs> opposite my house. Oh, really? And so rather every other evening, they are blasting music to invite people to come and drink. And I, and I, and I look at it that when we give approval for these pubs, do they get approval before they open up any a bar? Mm. So you just have a bar because you are trying to make money. You now turn your compound into mm. a bar, you're selling drinks, mm, right. and then you're making noise to advertise your drinks mm, to people, right. and the music goes everywhere. So it's about, yeah, all, I think every Nigerian has really let, let me, let me share my own experience. My own is not church. Mm. My own is not pubs. My own is not even clubs. Guess what my own is? Good morning, 5 a.m. Good morning. Love, give your life to uh, Jesus. No, I wouldn't Christ. mind that Good one. Morning. That one. 5 no, no. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah. You are not. That will like, help me to work out. What is going on? 5 a.m. Very, every single that morning. There's an unbeliever in your compound. <laughs> 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 Wait, there's the front of my compound because there's an unbeliever. So, honey, yeah, yeah, so that entire, room. my entire, that morning happens. Mm -hmm. Then at midnight, uh, on the dot, what they call them? The, the guys, the OPC. Uh, the whistles. <laughs> They're always whistling. Midnight standard. Yeah. Now, is that... What, what can you do to help us? <laughs> what are you doing to help us? No, what's the purpose of setting time later? Mm -hmm. but, what I what think that, that one is message. <laughs> Sorry? That one is message to the... Yeah, but you think of being people like sleeping. I can't sleep. In my parents' place, I, that was my... Yeah, like, the OPC, they're constantly whistling. They were only 12, yes. What's your organization helping us to do about this? Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Everything you all have spoken about, mm -hmm. I think we are confronted with right. every day. Mm. We get complaints from churches, from mosques, from neighbors to churches and mosques. Mm -hmm. We are accused of being against the Christians or against mm -hmm. the Muslims, as she said. But Lagos State has a law yeah. against noise pollution. Section 177 of the Lagos State Laws says that, for, let's even start with what is noise. Mm. Mm. Noise is different from, you, you can't really differentiate noise from sound. Okay. But it becomes a noise when it starts to irritate, cause discomfort, mm, raise your pulse level, <laughs> prevent you from sleeping, mm -hmm. then it is a noise. So noise pollution is when <laughs> you can hear things mm. that are not pleasant to you. So mm. it could be from church, it could be from preachers. We've even had complaints about neighbors having noisy dogs. Mm. Dogs. Yeah. Dogs. Yeah. dogs. Yeah. dogs. Yeah. dogs. And That's unfortunately, true. I'm guilty. I have about <laughs> nine dogs. What? <laughs> so I try and keep them quiet, right. especially now that I'm an um, yeah, ambassador. Yeah and the police of the environment. <laughs> so this law says that it is forbidden mm. to cause noise in a public space, okay. either by using musical instruments, either by using amplifiers, microphones, mm -hmm. or putting a church in a residential mm. area. Right. Ah. Now, let's, go, let's go there. In a residential Who area. gives approvals? Because we, we, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously we understand that things have happened. Mm -hmm. But there's some residents that are upset that churches get permission, they get permits to build with them. They say, you have to have higher churches five minutes. You know, we are guilty of that, RCCG, I know. We want a church five minutes every five minutes. Yeah. But at the same time, how do we with the, get that balance? It's about me and technology. Some churches, their sound, their sound systems, they, they do what they do, the inside. Precisely. So they, 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 they are sound puffs, buffs they put by the sides of the church that will reduce, in the, the inside of the church will be vibrating. But when you step outside, you it's hear quiet, nothing. Yeah. But many churches, 
are invest. still, they, they, they can't invest in the technology needed to keep the noise within those that want to hear it. I don't want to hear your message on Wednesday morning, but I'm forced to listen to it because I you find, want. I even find some of the noise too loud inside the church sometimes. <laughs> yes. Precisely, yeah. I was just going to say soundproofing mm. is not the solution. Mm -hmm. Because there's the source of the noise and there's the receiver of the noise. Mm. I have heard a story where an event planner lost a sense of hearing. It's possible. Yes, from trying to move close to the DJ mm -hmm. to tell him to turn down the music. And and drum pop. Pop. It yeah. popped, but uh -huh. she wasn't conscious of it. Oh, yes. Because it, it must have felt like, okay, they turned down the music. Mm. <sighs> Oh, oh, my Lord. So probably she got home and she's shouting and yeah, she's telling nothing. her kids, I can't hear you. Let me, let me come to our audience. I'd like to really hear some of your stories. Go ahead, please. Uh, in our area, we are a static area in our streets. I stay close to an office where they own their generator every afternoon. Okay. And the noise is like a grinding machine. Mm. Mm, it's terrible. Mm. And it, it can't even make you to try and concentrate. Right. And I stay close to a bar. Mm. Every 11 o'clock and 12 midnight, mm. they always play music. Mm. So I can't even sleep, I concentrate. It's mm. really, really, really mm. disturbing. Let's get another other extra example. So that we're talking about offices in residential areas too, but mm -hmm. they need to turn on the generator all through. Yeah. Let's get, get a few more examples. Yes, go uh, ahead. Uh, yes. Um, my name is Kay Balon Insola. Okay. I'm a student of one of the universities in Lagos. Uh, there was a time that no, uh, there was a party, uh, an event on campus that do cause noise uh, up to 10, 11. But uh, it's now got to a point whereby the management uh, implement a law that all events should end by eight. No matter the event, whether party, whether uh, anniversary and all that. But where I stay, uh, I stay close to a bar. Whenever there's noise at my house, I will locate to the hostel because I know by heat, right. there won't be noise. Okay, cool. I have a call, Habib. Habib, are you there? Yeah, good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. You're live. Yeah. Um, you think that, that on the screen. noise is natural in terms of people do make noise. Yes. But I'm looking at it from an angle whereby we can get money from this noise, like a regulation, whereby there will be a device that will be planted in uh, kind of uh, all these uh, religious centers, clubs, whereby after after the emission of noise, there will be like a like a meter that reads the decibel, because that's the unit of sound. It's really the decibel, so it has a limit in which you can uh, generate the noise. So when it goes over, there's a particular kind of, it's connected to a, to a server, so like let's say Lastema. So Lastema picks uh, the, uh, the, the, the unit, the SS unit. So by picking the SS unit, you may say, you may say for an SS unit of decibel, it is like let's say 5,000 Naira. So from there you generate money. So, okay, so we can find them. Okay. Okay, we can of, find them. Okay, we'll come. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely come to that. We'll, we'll let her. Hope you're getting me. Okay. Yes, yeah. I, I get. I get the point. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So two... that's what I feel that we can transform noise into something that we can generate money from. Okay. Because okay. even the acoustic stuff we're talking about is very very expensive. Oh. Nobody, not everybody has the money. So the the decibel uh, meter is just like the prepared meter. Okay. All right, thank you very much for that. Let me take just two more comments from our audience. I know this lady has been trying to, yes, where's the mic? Yes, okay. go ahead, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Ademola Adedoin. I think um, there should be some sort of governmental laws, um, um, you know, in control of car honking. People just play with it, like, mm. you're on the road yeah, and you hear a lot of pim, 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 pim. Most especially from trailer drivers, mm. tankers, lorries, like, it's, it's mm. distracting, you know? Mm. You're at work, you're trying to concentrate. It's just, you know, it's a lot of okay. distraction, yeah. Thank you very much for that suggestion. Let's take one more. Um, just one more. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. In my area in First Tark, mm. mm, okay. there is a early in the morning, 4 a.m., not even 5. One man will start shouting, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> it is dangerous to be sleeping by this time. Ah. I'm telling you. <laughs> Huh. Wake up for morning prayers. It is dangerous. And when people try to caution him, or they will turn you a witch. Mm. I don't mean, want to pray. It's too bad. So let, let's come back to you. What can you? What are you doing <coughs> to protect uh, Lagosians? Well, um, some people have said people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay. Mm. There are laws 
against all these activities. They're called infractions. Okay. And they are punishable by jail or by fine. Mm. We try to stay away from fining because fining is like, um, it's meant to be a deterrent. It's not a situation where, well, I'll make noise and I'll just okay. pay the fine. So our processes are set and what we do usually when there's a complaint, I'm going to flash the numbers and our handles where you can complain. I came on this show also to advocate for a noiseless Lagos. People don't know their laws. If you knew there was a law, we have sheriffs all over town in every district of Lagos. You only need to make a complaint and someone will come up to the wake up, wake up, wake up in the morning man. Mm. It could be arrested. Oh yes. Fantastic. And ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So, so like, let's talk about certain cultures that have become normal. So people do promotions in marketplaces. You find you can't walk in what they call it, what they call it borrow now. And not find one small DJ guy selling okay, CD. I think I need to explain mm. the law right. or probably read it verbatim. Yeah. Mm. It is an offense to display or engage in the business of selling of musical records mm -hmm. and playing of any musical instruments, songs, usage of public address, and systems in public places. Mm. Really? Mm. So a we DJ. can give a permit, uh -huh. and the permit would explain what noise is, what you can do to mitigate the effects of the noise mm. if you have to. Right. Amplify really. Mm. We can't say there shouldn't be parties. Fantastic. But we'll tell you barriers and um, soundproofing mm. and probably, you know, how you can build your one stage. More, one more thing. There are other ones like road shows. They carry the trucks around town. So yeah. those Making ones also numbers. need to get a permit. Right. Okay. And they are allowed a certain level. We measure mm -hmm. noise in decibels. Mm. Okay. Frequency for hertz decibels for the pressure. Right. Mm. Oh. Now, what really hurts you is not the frequency of the noise. Okay. It's the pressure mm. in decibels. For example, someone detonates a bomb here, and someone at the gate has a rupture in his ear from the noise. So it's the pressure that the noise comes with. Right. When we talk about frequency, we're talking about ultrasound. Mm. There's certain frequency that humans can't mm. hear. Maybe animals, dogs, yeah. dolphins, right. whales. Let me take this call from Alabi. He's been yeah. holding for a while. Alabi, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Still with my love. Yes. Um, <laughs> I would want to um, mention um, more of advocacy. A cousin of mine came from the U.S. Uh, and um, he was sitting beside me some time ago, and I was talking on the phone, and he was, you know, he was telling me that Mr. Man, you are too loud. <laughs> and then by his observation, even the way we address ourselves, the way we speak normally, the people. A guy. It's, 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 it's yeah. very, we are very loud as a yeah. people. And you see this, the way policemen talk to people, the yeah. way <laughs> bus conductors, drivers, the way yeah. they use their phone. Naturally phones, loud the people. Hi, yeah. just mm -hmm. very loud. <laughs> I need to read this Thank slow. you very much, Alabi. I think I shared my story. Yeah. When I went to the US, I was constantly shouting at my brother's wife, hey, brother, like, I'm right here, you don't have to you shout. Have to shout. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, there, there's some, I, I know that you have their laws. I remember when this, the, 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 there was a public announcement for the law for when it came stopping out, the yeah. DJs and all of that, when, I mean, stopping roadside sales of mu music, but what law is going to prevent my neighbor who <laughs> has a bad generator? Okay, let you me know, continue. Maybe when, you, when, you, when Jen was new, it was sounding <laughs> yeah, proper. That one, that's the one they called. I passed my neighbor. Pass my neighbor. That, that one does great. make noise. That one is one great. There are big gens that are faulty. And go, 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 go. So how okay, do I so deal I with that? I would read this laws. Okay. Subsection 1 has said it is an offense to display or engage in business that would require microphones okay. on the street. Hmm. It is also an offense to use public address system or loudspeakers to propagate beliefs or ideas, okay. advertise any good, okay. or solicit and disseminate information in any resident. Shell, please. Okay. It is an offense. It is also an offense to use public address system or loudspeakers to solicit for passengers right. or advertise the sale of goods at parks, markets, and public places. And we are about to wake up on our enforcement drive. But okay. as the caller said, 
You cannot enforce a law that people are not aware about. Yes. Mm. So the first thing, La Sepa, as an agency, um, His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, has given us a mandate to go out and do extensive advocacy, share information, <laughs> share information in friendly and easy ways, okay. educate people through entertainment and shows like this, and communicate. Right. Mm. Feedback is important. Mm. When we do this for a while, and we believe the clubs have heard, the churches have heard, we also offer solutions both from the source of the noise and to the recipients. Oh, you would see, for example, at airports, those guys that walk on ground, they wear air mufflers. Mm. That's because we can't deal with the source. Right. Mm. The recipients would be protected okay. somehow. Mm. Then for the source, there are so many things they do. For, for example, again, when we're on, on the aircraft, we don't hear the noise. Mm because the cabin is pressurized. Yes, right. And when we pressurize, it's difficult for sound to travel mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. So those are mitigating factors. Right, so I know that's Then okay. in churches and mosques, <laughs> right. mm -hmm. we are starting to serve notices, even as we speak now. Mm -hmm. okay. We serve a first notice, warn them, invite for meetings, mm -hmm. negotiate, mm -hmm. talk, discuss, Tell them the effects of noise pollution, even to themselves in the church. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know. <laughs> and then the last result is enforcement. Okay. These things are punishable by jail. They're punishable by fines. Mm. And we also, the law backs us up in closing up your business mm. and selling it permanently. So I have one quick question. I live really close to the stadium and during um, festival periods, like festive periods like Christmas, the concerts that go on there affect me. I live a bit far away, but it comes to me. What can be done for me as the recipient in this case? Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. People come to us for noise permits. Mm -hmm. When we give noise permits, we also mandate that person to inform people People's. in his immediate environment. Mm -hmm. We also try to do that before we give a noise permit. With that information, you could buy earplugs oh. for the night. Mm -hmm. You can away. also yeah. protect yourself. Mm -hmm. we, we don't all, always preach that, oh, the noise has to be broken from the source. Mm -hmm. In fact, if soundproofing is not done efficiently, it can cause damage to people there at the source. Mm -hmm. So you as a recipient, once your neighbor has informed you that he has a permit, to make noise for a set duration of time mm -hmm. with mitigating factors. For example, when you walk on streets in developed countries, it, you have to open doors before you hear music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right outside, right. it's Nothing. like silence. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible here. Yeah. It's possible. Mm -hmm. And we are about to make that our Lagos. Okay. A noiseless okay. Lagos. Are you looking to muddy yeah. places that is right. also already been practiced? Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. And we definitely hope you come back at some point to let us know the progress you've made so far mm -hmm. in the next few months. Thank you very much. We're going to go on a break now. When we come back, our guest, our special guest, a woman we love. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you looking to reward in places that already Yes. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So she has 19 years professional expertise in social and behavioral change communication, SBCC, mainly in areas of adolescent sexual and reproductive health, HIV and AIDS, and maternal health. Over the years, she has worked in various capacities as a TV presenter and in the, and in the health sector. She's also very passionate about children, adolescent sexual and reproductive high, um, health, and development. Welcome with us, Adiola Ulun Lawyer. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So you can call us on 0708066814. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. 
So we like to celebrate women once in a while, uh, with young women that are doing great things. It's important to encourage women, especially because a lot of people sometimes feel hopeless, like there's no, there's not work to be done. So I'd like you to share your story of how you started, especially with uh, Work with Action Health, yes. um, how that got you the opportunities that opened that opened for you. Tell Thank us. you very much for having me on the pla uh, on the program on this uh, your view today. Yes. Um, so um, I started working as a 17 year old teenager with Action Health Incorporated, and that made me fall in love with the sector of public health, especially having a passion for adolescent sexual and reproductive health. And I've been very, very privileged since the time I started working at age 17 to become exposed to issues around uh, young people's challenges, especially young girls. Mm. And over the years, I've also gotten help from mentors, from people who have given me the opportunity to rise uh, mm. in, and work in different uh, organizations and capacities. Mm. Like I said, I've worked in like four different organizations and in the past eight years I've been working with the UN in Nigeria. Mm. And now that I'm approaching 40, I'm going to turn 40 on December 1st. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so I started reflecting and looking back at my journey in mm. terms of how so much has been given to me and how um, I need to give back. Mm. So that's what led to the concept of 40 for 40 girls. Okay. So I said to myself, I want to invest in 40 girls Aww. because I've been given so much. Mm. And um, so I came back to my roots, which is to Action Health Incorporated, which was where I got a job at 17. I mean, I can't imagine my life without Did you get a job or did you volunteer initially? I was volunteering okay. uh, when I finished secondary school. Yeah, that was and the part because, I to get out. Okay, I was volunteering because my friend was working there. Right. And uh, in 1997, she got admission to go into the university. So uh, I've, our job became vacant. Mm -hmm. And because mm. I've been volunteering there, they were like, okay, you're a good fit. Do you want to work yeah. with us? And I'm like, yes. So I got to work with them because I didn't pass my jump mm. the first year I tried. So I got to work with them for a year and a half mm. when I had to receive my jump and continue to work before I gained admission into the University of Lagos mm. to study MassCom. Mm. So over the years, um, you know, I've had opportunities to travel, work as a youth ad advocate, activist, promote issues. And I also was like a pioneer TV presenter on LTV mm. discussing sexual and reproductive health of young people. So we used to run a live show like this, right. get call-ins from right. teenagers, talk about different issues, ranging from mm. menstruation, Fantastic. body issues, self-esteem, stuff like that. Let's talk about your duration at the Action Health, Health Incorporated. Incorporated. Yes. You were 17, yes. you were dealing with teenage issues. Yes. How do you see today where people of, um, what we call middle-aged people deal with teenage issues? What's, <laughs> because you, were, you, you could I was easily a uh, align, you could yes. understand how teenage girls, you were a teenager yourself, you had some yes. issues, yes. so you were fit for the job. Exactly. Based on, you yes. know, that. How do you talk, what do you see today in our leadership where people who are not in tune with it, men deal with women issues? Men are in Senate debating women issues. Mm. There are no women there. How do you, what do you see? I think it's, a, it's a fascinating yes, experience for me, starting as a teenager, working in a place like Action Health, and growing up to become a grown woman at almost 40. Mm. Now it's like I've gone through the cycle. I understand better what young people are going through. And to be honest, I think we're failing a lot of adolescents. Yeah. We expect them to grow up by themselves. Many young people are dealing with many issues in terms of going through puberty, going through their first menstruation, going through having wet dreams, going through having attractions to the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Who tells them what a good relationship is? Who tells them it's okay if you're changing, if it's okay to have attraction? Is How do you manage all of these things? Parents don't talk to young people anymore, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are learning things in the social media, watching TV, having friends who don't know better. Let me, let me just you start. I'd like, I'd like to, yeah. I want you to hop on this. It's okay to have a, to be attracted or to be, yeah. have an attraction. Mm -hmm. How do you do the teenager telling you that she feels attracted to this guy? She likes this boy. She's thirteen and she's saying that. I, re I slap remember her face. when I was in secondary school, I had several crushes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's something you feel guilty about, and you shouldn't feel guilty about because it's, it's a natural. So face. how do you handle it? You just get to know who this person is. Okay. You mm -hmm. talk to them and monitor what they do. Oh, you like this guy? Aha, uh -huh. okay, you like him. Oh, what? tell me what you like about there him. There are many organizations And you know the funny thing? This. Most crushes die very quickly. Yeah. 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 It's a face, yeah. you understand. But when you make them feel guilty, guilty then they hide it. and they're ashamed and then people can capitalize on it. Mm. But it's healthy yeah. to talk about these things and monitor them and yeah. give them the space to interact in your presence. Right. You know where they're going, you monitor them. But when you...
when you come down on them, like, oh, it's a sin, it's a crime, I don't want to see you, you know, then they're like, okay, I'm doing something bad, you I, know. I remember um, <laughs> as a young person having this, uh, organizing this event based yeah. on my church. So faith-based organizations do a lot of these things, and yeah. we go to, to engage with schools yeah. to talk to these children, do sex education for these children. Yeah. And it's it, called it, sexuality education. Yeah, sexuality <laughs> education. And it, it's been informative. It was informative for me then, and I'm saying yeah. like this was 15 years ago. But I, re I realized that in recent times, churches have changed strategy, and we're not doing as much of it as before. So how do you... How do you? How would you en um, get people to engage in talking to children? Because whenever you talk to them now, as opposed to then, what they do is ask me for money. Then mm. they ask me for counsel. Yeah. They ask me for counsel. They tell me about their struggles and tell me how they've done this and they've done what they to. But when I talk to people now, the same mm -hmm. age, what I hear is I have monetary challenges. Give me money. So how would that person that has the heart of reaching out to people do it without having cash but just passion? How do you brace for that space where they ask you for money? I, I think our value systems have changed yeah. and we're all responsible for that. Yeah. Like I said, we still need to go back to the fact that nobody is taking these children through any form of counseling or orientation as they are evolving. There are many children who are growing up now without parents mm. who are teaching them how to survive and all of that. For mm. instance, um, on this 40 for 40 girls project now, we've enrolled, we enrolled 56 girls. I raised funds, okay, I put my 50% of my personal money and then raised money through family and friends, about 26 of them who invested 40,000 naira per girl. Mm. And I was able to raise money for 56 girls. And mm. guess what? As I speak, the, we started the training last week, but 10 girls have dropped out. Ah. Okay, <laughs> and we minutes. can't force them because if you if you don't seize an opportunity by yourself to be yes. trained on something, there's no, nothing we can do. Yeah. So, so it so speaks a... to the fact that people have people grow up with different values mm. or no values at all, mm. so they don't even value mm. when you're bringing something that Knowledge is not money them. exactly. Mm. Yeah, you know, you've done so much from such a young age, yeah. so many things. But one thing that uh, I mean, you've answered some of the questions already that I had from looking at what you've done. Okay. But there's this thing I wanted to ask. You talked about teaching young people how to use a condom. Okay. So there's this, there's this conversation that's been happening, and I think it's happening in Accra, because I mm -hmm. came across a uh, social media page, and they're coming against schools, they're trying to teach their children. They say they're too, too early to teach them sexuality. You're teaching a child how to use a condom. You're teaching a, actually showing pictorial images of what to do. When is too early and when is it, when would you say, is, right. when is it right to take a child through that process? Okay, first, there's something called age appropriate information. Mm. For instance, in Nigeria, we have what we call the family life and HIV uh, education curriculum, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be taught in all schools, mm -hmm. but unfortunately is not readily available because of lack of uh, government funding. Mm -hmm. Because the curriculum already has a structured uh, level of information that is given at different ages. What mm -hmm. you tell a 10 year old is different from what you tell a 13 year old yeah. or a 16 year old or an 18 year old. I understand that. Yeah. And you, with your experience, yeah. having sat with many young people over the years, yes. what would you advise? Let's even leave school out of it. Let's say parents. Let what me, do you think is the right age to have that conversation? You know, again, when we talk about the home, different people operate different systems at home. But mm. you have to, first and foremost, create a conducive environment for your children to talk to you and ask you anything no, at any Mariam age. is discussing with a seven-year-old child about... about early. That's no, I mean, early talking for me. When to, she said it, talking I was like, no. to a seven-year-old about condoms <laughs> no, is not probably condom, not... not condom. Okay. I think it was... You were saying... You were we're talking sex. about drug... Drug... Abuse. drug uh, yeah. 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 So what's appropriate? Yeah, I, I have conversations with my children based off of what they're already hearing outside. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So for me, and I would rather they get all the information from me yeah, than sense. from so somewhere So the fact that they're coming to you to ask is a good thing. And when they come to you, you should be able to give them information. For instance, let me just give you a practical example. I met the girls yesterday for the first time, and it was very emotional for me. Seven of them, for instance, are single mothers, mm. and they have babies from 11 months old to four years old, mm. and they are between the ages of, what, 19 to 23, mm. okay? And I asked the 46 girls, how many of you have boyfriends? Say the truth and let the devil be ashamed. <laughs> you know, we all laughed. 80% already have uh, boyfriends new, and they're sexually ones. active. With the new sex. No, 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 I'm just saying, I'm yeah. giving you the demographic yeah. of these 46 yeah. girls that I'm training, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. I cannot pretend to them to start talking about abstinence. Mm. I have to talk, talk to them about well, condoms. Protection. And for the, I had a special session with the single mothers to say, you can't make 
a mistake twice. Mm. How many of you are on contraceptives? Only one. Mm. And that one did it without her partner knowing. Hmm. Okay, the other ones are like, eh, eh kogba, or he's not accepting, or I, I don't know, I heard about this. I said, excuse me, go to the clinic, talk to a skilled health worker to give you information. Because on you, bam, yeah. it's going to happen body. again. So Do you understand? So I'm just saying, yeah, you leave, you, I deal with young people at yeah. their level. Mm -hmm. And then it's a process. People mm -hmm. don't change in one day. You have to support them, you have yeah. to counsel them, right. you have to mentor them and work through with them yes. on their journey. You know, there journey. was something also that you said in an interview where you said... <laughs> where you mentioned, we teach girls to say no. Yes. We don't teach them what to do, when to say yes. The skills For me, that need. was, that, you know, that was mind-blowing. When we have good girls that make mistakes, yeah. bad girls know what to do yeah. because through experience. But the good girls that make mistakes because we have not equipped them on what to do when they, ha when they yeah. are ready to do it. Yeah. For me, I think, okay. mind-blowing. I didn't want to forget so that. So I wanted you to... Okay, growing up, yeah. I, my parents didn't tell me... Any. I was supposed to be strictly Muslim girl, <laughs> no boyfriend allowed in the house, that kind mm. of thing. Yeah. But I was privileged to have a close neighbor who turned out to be like a mentor for life, an okay. auntie now. And she would say, it's normal to have a crush, but well, just give him a while. You will find out his fault. So mm. I kept looking for the fault of the crushes and he would go. And then she would say, it's normal to be in a relationship and break up. When you say yes, you can also say no. Oh, good. So, so she put in those words that, you know, that just Helps kind of you. sort of mm. formed me around relationships okay. and it worked. So what do you do to equip parents now to know the right things to say, mm. to be able to and say it at the right time, knowing that, you know, t adolescence is a, is a process knowing when to put it in the child's head. And when it was time to date, she would say, when you're going on a date, take your money, take your lunch money, take your taxi fare, and walk out when it's Next turning money. out bad. Yeah, so exactly. it's important. <laughs> Parents don't know how to put it in process. So mm. how do you equip? Apart training young people to train right now. Uh, adults. Mm. To, I, no? It's very difficult to deal with all of these questions <laughs> in such a few minutes. Yeah. But yeah. one thing I tell women especially is, can you please be real and honest with these girls? Mm -hmm. Sometimes because we are grown up, we start acting so holy like we didn't go through, even sharing your own personal experience and journeys with these teenagers <laughs> makes them really feel normal. Yes. Some of them are going insane with guilt and shame, but when you tell them, look, I've been there before, I was jilted before, I told them, oh, I've just broke up a relationship, you understand, because it's not good, and I said, know yourself. Know yourself, have your values, live and abide by those things, and you know what, it's okay when you make mistakes. Pick yourself up and, you know. something I want you to touch on, you know. <clears throat> you to touch on before we run up, because, yeah. um, this issue of young people not always seeking money, and I think Dr. touched on this a bit. Yeah. When you were younger, you volunteered, and yes. that, that had a ripple effect on how you helped to. Yes. I also did a lot of volunteer work in the past, and it helped Fantastic. me to the point where I am today. But a lot of young people don't want to volunteer. In fact, they want to volunteer, but they expect that something should come. At least give me a stipe, give me something. <laughs> right. But usually, it's some companies society. can't afford so it's How do we help the up. psyche of a young teenager? Right. Please, let me just add, the day we had this discussion on the show, you know mm. I said it here that so I, have, I have interns I don't pay. One of my interns in my office called another intern, watch and stop her on the show. She said she will not pay us, she will mm. never pay us, mm. and she stopped coming to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you it's that bad, like because she watched me on the show, she stopped working. That's the, that's the situation is that the everybody mindset just, is the wrong. mindset is I want money, they want to use me. I, our young people are learning from adults. Mm. They are not falling from not like that. that. Yes. You see what I'm saying? They are our products. You understand? I don't want to put the blame too much on them because our values, look at our society for God's sake. We worship money, we worship people who are fraud, fraudsters yes. and all of that, oh, ill-gotten wealth and all of that. So they are watching us mm. and they're emulating what we Fantastic. put into them. And our parents can be blamed. You also gave the example yeah. of the girl that you paid to work and her father said to her, how yeah. much is she even paying you? Yeah. So that's already the sort of things one, we tell her. One of the because things I still do I free work till now. I still do a lot of events free. Let me, let one me. of the things I impressed on the girl, I just want to say this quickly yesterday because we had a, uh, an interactive mm. session. I said, lose your sense of entitlement. Hmm. Nobody owes you. Hmm. You are all come because these girls are picked from slum areas like Iwaya, Bariga, Makoko. They all have very compelling stories. Hmm. I wish I could come with one or two of them. But I said to them, your parents can't give you what I have a call from they Ghana. don't have. Let me take a call from Ghana. Okay. Okay. Judith, are you there? Yeah. Thanks for calling. Sorry for keeping you. Go ahead, please. Good Go ahead, Judith. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Yes. Um, I... Yeah, I'm here. 
Okay, my name is Judith. I'm calling from Accra. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in the sexual education because I'm calling from Accra, and then we have a topic. And um, recently, I mean, I was very happy when um, the other lady mentioned that uh, she she listened to something that um, in Accra we 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 have we have some issues on sexual issues on um, in the school, in the curricula that has just been introduced. And in, in our in our in our case, we realize that in in um, the sexual issues are things that should be taught when you are a bit around the puberty age. But um the curricula the government is trying to introduce something in the family school where kids are taught um, how to use condom at age uh, 10, which is class oh. 5. Mm -hmm. oh, to it's too class. early. And then there was an up. That's too early. You can't teach a child at 10 how to use condoms. We have to run up on this, but I think um, very... it's important that we celebrate the work you're doing. Mm -hmm. And hashtag 40 for 40 girls. But why only girls? Boys, Nico. I am really, really interested in these girls who are out of school, you know, when we talk about young people, we talk about those who have finished university, those who have finished secondary school, these girls are dropouts. Mm. They don't have anything. They can't right. compete with their peers, and often they're sexually exploited. Right. So often they can't feed, right. they can't work. So I particularly paid attention on these marginalized, underserved oh, girls for a purpose, because we often leave them out of Hopefully anything right. that we do. All right, so we celebrate yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Coming. Thank you. So, before we run off, we have to tell our, uh, our viewers again and our guests, we have packs for Duffield Foods, giving us um, noodles, Indomie noodles, uh, I think Mini Me Chin Chin, and other gift packs from Duffield Foods for the men in our audience, only the men. Mm -hmm. We get a pack mm -hmm. when you go in home. And our female, the women, we get a 10,000 naira gift voucher to Ada Small. You can go shopping there anytime. I think you have till maybe the end of the year or something like that. I think it's a year worth of voucher. But you can actually... October 6th. October 6th, I believe. Okay, this weekend. So go shopping, 10,000 naira voucher by Ada Small Day in mm -hmm. Go there and um, you can get your shopping. Woo! So the women, they have 15 tickets. So we'll give it to the 15 women in the audience. But the men, you're not going to go home empty. We have gift packs for you too. So don't feel bad about not getting a voucher. <laughs> That's all we can take on today's show. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.